Okay, so I really need to talk about what's going on with hearing aid insurance coverage. Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 217, and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about what's kind of going on in the whole insurance scene when it comes to hearing healthcare. But before I do, do me a huge favor, click that like button, really helps out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. So, boy, where do I start? If you guys have been watching the channel here over the course of the past month and a half or so, you've been seeing me post a couple of videos talking about Oticon and their new hearing aids and talking about how those new hearing aids are not going to be included in these managed care formularies. So think of it as like insurance, but your insurance company is contracting through a third party administrator to administer the hearing aid benefits. That's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about managed care. Now, they essentially sent out a notification as soon as those new Oticon Intent hearing aids were released, saying that they're not gonna include those in any of these managed care formularies. And then we got a follow-up email from DeMont, which is the parent company of Oticon, saying that their uh, Bernafon brand was going to be included in these managed care formularies. So essentially, you're not gonna be able to get the top tier devices anymore. You'll be able to get a second tier uh, brand of devices if you're going to use your managed care for your hearing aid benefit coverage, okay? Now, that was shortly followed, maybe like a week later or so, maybe a little bit more than a week, for, uh, by United Healthcare Hearing, which is one of these hearing aid benefit managers or a third party administrator, a managed care group, right? Um, that uh, are not happy with that decision by DeMont and Oticon and Bernafon. They're basically saying, you know what? We are not going to be committed to offering any of Bernafon's products. In fact, we're not going to offer any of, uh, of Oticon's products either. And basically saying that you can just get fit with some other devices by your hearing care professional and uh, you should be able to have a good outcome with that, right? And uh, so essentially there's been this entire back and forth and, and people wondering like, well, okay, so uh, Otica, or sorry, United Healthcare is basically gonna just throw their weight around and they're gonna force Oticon to keep their products, their newest product lines inside of their managed care benefits, right? Well, as it turns out, uh, Gary Rosenblum, which, who's the president of Oticon, uh, essentially issued another statement about this or essentially an email to hearing care professionals basically saying, yep, yeah, we're not going to cave to the demands of United Healthcare. Um, if they don't wanna offer our stuff, that is totally up to them, but we're committed to providing our top tier technology products to hearing care professionals who are going to be committed to providing a high quality of care with those devices. We're no longer gonna have our devices uh, in these different managed care companies, especially United Healthcare Hearing, because we know that patients are not receiving a high level of care, and we only want our devices to go to patients uh, that are going to receive a high level of care, okay? So that's basically the gist. But what was also included inside of that email was him urging hearing care professionals like myself to request that other hearing aid manufacturers, we're talking about the Phonex, we're talking about the Starkeys, we're talking about the Signias, we're talking about all these other companies, um, essentially asking us to ask them not to include their newest technologies inside of these managed care formularies either. And what's really crazy here is that this is what I believe to be the start of a massive change inside of the hearing aid industry when it comes to hearing aid insurance coverage. If you were to go back, you know, 10, 20 years, even before I got into the hearing industry, right? Um, if you were to go back that far, you would have found a lot of private insurance companies offering hearing aid insurance benefits. So whether you go to an in-network provider or go to an out-of-network provider, they would commit a certain percentage of coverage of those hearing aids. And so you could go to pretty much whoever you want to receive hearing aids, and then that provider would be compensated based off of their contractual allowed amount which was enough for them to justify, you know, following best practices, making sure that they're providing you with a high level of service and all of that, right? Because it's what they agreed upon. 
Um, but as time has gone on, these insurance companies figured that they could actually contract with a third party administrator, like an Amplifone or a True Hearing or a variety of the other ones that are out there, and actually save money because that third party administrator would basically administer all those hearing aid benefits and start to restrict your access to who you could go to and then all of these different providers and the promise of them getting more patients from these third party administrators were agreeing to lower reimbursement rates. And so once that took hold, basically you started seeing these third party benefit managers popping up out of everywhere and pretty much every insurance plan has gone over to uh, using one of these third party administrators instead of just giving you your insurance benefits like you are traditionally used to receiving them where you have open access to care and you have much better coverage because what's the name of the game? The name of the game is saving the insurance company's money at your expense from a hearing perspective. Now, this worked out probably in consumers' favor for a while because what was happening is, is that consumers were spending a little bit less money on their hearing treatment. They were still getting premium level hearing brands, right? And their hearing care professional was not completely inundated with all of these low reimbursement patients. So they could justify still giving them a good quality of care because they had plenty of other private pay patients who were basically subsidizing these low reimbursement plans, right? Well, as time has gone on, it has completely, this, this third party coverage has completely eroded the quality of care inside of the hearing aid industry. Um, we already had issues with private pay clinics not providing a high level of care. What do you think happens when their reimbursement drops like precipitously uh, through the bottom of the floor? Like you're not gonna find a whole lot of clinics that are accepting these benefits and actually providing a high level of care to their patients. And so you've got these individuals who are getting these really good hearing aid brands um, at a low discounted rate, but they're not actually getting a whole lot of benefit from these hearing aids because the hearing care professional isn't taking the time to make sure that they're being successful with them. And so Oticon eventually got to the point where they're like, this is freaking stupid. We're actually not making as much money. We're dispensing more of our products, but because we're not making any money off of this, it's like we don't have enough money for better R&D and we're essentially undercutting all the private clinics that are uh, providing care in a high level way and we're essentially uh, uh, handcuffing ourselves. So they, it finally got so bad, which it's bad. Like, it, I mean, you might not see it from my perspective and I totally get that, but uh, if you could see how these third party administrators have completely destroyed quality of care throughout the hearing aid industry, um, you would be like, this is horrible. Like, I don't wanna have an insurance plan that has, has coverage through one of these programs because I'm not, now I'm not even gonna get the highest, uh, the best technology and my hearing care professional doesn't care if I do good because they're not getting reimbursed enough to care, right? Um, I actually used to accept these third party uh, benefits when I had an open schedule and I could, I could still commit the same amount of time to a private pay patient versus a managed care patient. But then it got to the point where like, if I keep doing this, I'm gonna lose money or I'm gonna have to reduce the quality of care uh, for my patients and I wasn't willing to do that. So I literally got out of all of them like three or four years ago at this point. And we've never been more successful because people care more about hearing their best and they care more about quality of care than they do about using their insurance benefits and getting the cheapest devices humanly possible with the cheapest level of care humanly possible. Um, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of thing. Like you might go and use your managed care benefits one time and be like, uh, uh, I'm gonna save some money when it comes to my hearing care. And then you get the hearing aids and you're not getting any quality service. And you're like, why do I not hear very well with these hearing aids? It's because you use your managed care to go and get those devices. Well, essentially what's going to happen here is that Oticon is going to be leading the charge in all of these other hearing aid manufacturers basically pulling their premium brands out of these managed care formularies, meaning that if you have hearing aid insurance coverage and your insurance coverage is going through a third party administrator, like a True Hearing, like an Amplifone, like an HCS, like a uh, United Healthcare Hearing, then you're actually not going to be able to get any of these really good products because these manufacturers are starting to realize that people are not being successful with their hearing aids, not because their hearing aids aren't good, but because the care that they're receiving is subpar because all of the 
um, incentive for the provider to do a good job has been completely taken away uh, because they just they cannot justify spending the proper amount of time with their patients in order to get a high level treatment outcome. And on top of that, it's becoming very unprofitable for hearing aid uh, manufacturers to continue going this route because essentially private pay clinics like myself have been subsidizing all of this low cost uh, hearing aid sales from the hearing aid manufacturers. And so apparently someone at Oticon is really, really smart because they realize that they don't have to play in this game. Every single provider that I've talked to who used to be accepting these managed care programs and who got out of accepting them were like, yeah, um, our profitability, our treatment outcomes have never been better because they uh, can focus on one thing and one thing only, and that's providing a high quality of care. And there's a lot of people who want and need a high quality of care if they actually want to be successful with hearing treatment. And so what I predict is that Oticon will find this to be not only profitable for them, but they will essentially be able to take and develop better technologies because they're not essentially giving away all of their profitability that they could be putting into research and development for actual better devices. Like, like you guys have been requesting forever. They're like, why don't these hearing aid manufacturers develop better hearing aids? Well, I'm sorry, they can only develop better hearing aid technology if they have the money to do so. And if they have all these managed care companies that they're, they're selling discount hearing aids to, uh, or selling their hearing aids to at a discounted rate, there's not enough money left over to do as much R&D as they would want to, right? And, you know, it's just, it's going to end up totally changing the hearing healthcare landscape. What's going to happen, I believe, is that you're not going to be able to get these premium devices from any hearing aid insurance at some point, unless these hearing aid insurance companies, or these insurance companies, stop working with these managed care companies, or and start giving, like, traditional hearing aid benefits back, because, like, your coverage should actually be better. You should be spending less money on your hearing aids if you had traditional insurance that did coverage of these hearing aids instead of it going through a third party benefit manager who needs to have a cut of that money that is, uh, that is there, right? Um, so I don't know about you, but my premiums are going up, my deductibles are going up, my, my coverage is getting worse as time goes on with insurance. And so uh, the same thing is gonna happen from a hearing care perspective for you. And this is why I caution people to where once they hit Medicare age to not give up their traditional Medicare benefits to go with a Medicare Advantage plan because they promise hearing aid coverage. And all it is is you're gonna be able to get second tier devices with very low quality of care and you're gonna be upset and then you're gonna to have to spend more money going into a clinic like mine to have those devices fit and programmed properly for you. So you'll actually end up likely spending more money if you're not just a, someone who gets lucky with your hearing aid treatment. So this saga is not over. Things are going to be changing and changing a lot, I have a feeling, over the course of the next several years. Uh, we actually just recorded a, a full-on um, podcast talking about all of what's going on with Oticon and Bernafon and United Healthcare Hearing and all of that. Um, very interesting uh, discussion that we had uh, with uh, Dr. Kelsey Beck and Dr. Rachel Cook and I. And um, you guys will not want to miss that. So if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure that you're subscribed with those notifications on. So as soon as that video, uh, that video comes out, that podcast comes out, you'll be able to watch it and listen to it. Because um, I'll just say this, like Rachel got, was on fire during this because she had to work in a clinic that did almost exclusively managed care uh, hearing aid coverage. So uh, she was like just on fire today. You guys will love it. But nevertheless, that is all I really wanted to talk about today. Let me know what you guys think. Like, what do you think about hearing aid coverage? What do you think about these third-party benefit managers that are taking a huge cut of the profitability and making it so the provider uh, can't justify spending time with their patients? Are you in favor of that? Are you against that? Do you think that hearing aid insurance is a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Like, uh, just let me know in the comment section. And as always, I will see you next week.